Sharon is best girl. Sharon will always be best girl. Oh, oh yeah. Yo, what's up? It's Yakovy James. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we need to talk about Trails of Cold Steel. <laughs> I have so many thoughts, um, but before we continue, just go down below, smash that subscribe button, and this will be all the RPG content you never asked for, but you're so happy that you stumbled upon. <laughs> Trails of Cold Steel. This is a game that takes place in the Kingdom Empire. RPGs are Kingdom Empire, basically the same thing. Well, technically not in Final Fantasy XII, but Regardless, in Trails of Cold Steel, this all happens in the Empire of Erebonia. Trails of Cold Steel is the continuation of the Trails in the Sky series. This game follows the lead character, main character, his name is Reen Schwarzer. He's the through line and with his classmates of Class 7. Class 7 is one of the classes at Thor's Military Academy. Thor's Military Academy is just that, a military academy, and one thing about this empire is there's very much a class system, so the nobles and um, the regular peasant folk <laughs> do not interact, and society is very much driven by the nobles, and so that plays a big part into um, the main narrative of the story, but Class 7 uh, has kind of broken the barriers and created, put these groups together. Um, your class is your party. So your party consists of lead character, of course, Reen, Elisa, Emma, Laura, Fee, Eusis, Gaius, Elliot, and Machias. Yes, that is a wide cast. Um, there are a few more playable characters that do reveal themselves uh, later in the game, so I don't want to spoil that for you. So the game balances between Thor's Military Academy and you go on these missions called field exercises, where there's a small group called Class 7 who you don't really know why they're separate from the other classes at Thor's. They're chosen because they have an affiliation with this new mechanical device called the Arcus. That basically is a device that allows two people to link with each other during battle. So, for military purposes, that is very useful. You get extra abilities by using this. Also, in the setup, game setup of this, you it's basically like um, Final Fantasy VII in the Materia system, where you like can put in different skills or enhance certain skills with different orbments. That's what they call orbits. This game starts out very slow, and it is a drag, and the thing that I've understood now from playing through Trails of Cold Steel 1, Trails of Cold Steel 2, Trails of Cold Steel 3, is that they take their time in letting you experience the narrative through a bunch of side characters, and some characters you don't even really get to know until the third game. With such a large cast though, there is a colorful assortment of characters. Um, you, What's nice about this game series is that your side characters actually have personalities and very much are integral into the main narrative of the story. Um, personally, you might like them more than some of the main characters. Sharon My is lady. best girl. Sharon will always be best girl. Now, with the premise of this game. That doesn't sound really that enticing to play. But literally every single best games of PS4 and 20 fill in the blank, every single one of those videos, Trails of Cold Steel kept popping up and popping up and I was like, hmm, maybe I should play it. And then I f did some research and I realized it's a total of eight games and I was like, oh, absolutely not. And then I did some more research and there's like three games and then two games and then Trails of Cold Steel, which is another three. The fourth one is coming out in the fall, winter of this year, I believe. And I'm not unfamiliar with playing JRPGs. It's my go-to genre of video game. And the slow burn is not even the correct vocabulary to use to describe the pace of this game because the military academy portion is so boring. 
the pacing of it because like nothing really I mean kind of kind of nothing that you really do there has anything to do with what's happening in the main through line of what goes on in the field exercises and the whole concept of this game, when I was reading about it, doesn't sound that interesting. Okay, a group of special students have this new mech that they are to test out on the field. Great. Cool. Well, like most RPGs, things happen on missions and more things come into play, more characters. And because how the game is set up, how they split up your party for these different missions, you automatically get more character development with certain characters and very much less so with others, just based solely based on the fact that you are not spending any time with them. So you aren't experiencing things with them, you don't get to know each other that well because you're on different military missions. And it also feels sometimes that even though these games are so long, some character development happens off screen. Choice, uh, not what I would do for a game, but I'm not a game developer, not yet. But I will say, what this game does do well is once you get to know these characters, you do feel connected to them and they become more interesting and the story is actually really good. It's like the writing is <laughs> but the the actual like story, I know that sounds weird. The writing's like not that great, but the story is good. There's a lot of twists and turns and like surprises and you're like, oh, a lot of those moments. And so it's worth it for that, but the deterrent is you will be, the game will create some sort of gumption of getting, like, t pulling you in, getting you intrigued and excited for what comes next in the story. And then you go back to the military academy and it just, like, puts up, you just floor the break and it, it just feels like two separate games. That's the problem with Cold Steel. They don't, they're very barely interacting. You get to meet the characters for sure at the Thoris Military Academy, but more character development happens on the missions. So, yeah. <laughs> and I think the reason like some of the characters are really Oh, my face is all shiny. So shiny! And I think the reason that some of the characters are so good is because the voice acting is very well done. But there's a lot of like, like for example, um, there will be points in the game that you can play for an hour, two hours, three hours. I think maybe four hours is my maximum. and. It's all cutscenes. It's all dialogue and cutscenes. And the thing is, with modern day games nowadays, most things are voiced. And this game came out 2013, 2014, and a lot of it is like pressing. It's for the PlayStation. I guess you could probably play it on PC too, but it, it's a lot of just pressing X and like skim reading and reading. So, I don't know. That's that with the story. If that's something you're like into, then good for you. Most redeeming quality about this game, I would say, is the battle system. It's your, in the format, it's like your standard turn-based battle system. It's very strategic in the fact that they have, you have attacks, crafts, and arts. Um, obviously, attacks and crafts are more targeted for your melee-based um, characters, but crafts range from can do a bunch of whole bunch of things. You have eight, nine party members. You have the opportunity to really like kind of figure out how you like to play and then which characters you like to use. And the thing is that's nice, also not nice and nice is the ni nice part is you meet, meet and know all of your party members at the very start of the game. Not ideal for my first. I mean, I like to reveal playable characters as the story progresses, but this game does not do that by any means. Story-wise, they'll split you in half, and then you have a party, so you're stuck playing with like four people, four or five people. There's usually like four, there's four active members and a reserve or two reserves who can, you can swap in and out how you feel, however you wish. So, overall, 
Do what I say, this is a good game. Sure, it's a good game. Uh, because of the characters, I mean, it's a nice game that like side characters get screen time too and you like get relationships with them as well. Sharon is best girl. What's nice is the battle system. I really like it. It's flashy. Uh, it can be fast paced. The deterrence of this game and franchise as a whole is the pacing and the unnecessarily needed amounts of dialogue. Like I, I play Persona, I play Tales of, like I get lots of dialogue, but all that dialogue generally has to do with the story. And what this game lacks is like that dialogue has nothing to, like with your trying to make relationships with different characters, it has nothing to do with the main story that's happening. So you're just sitting there and hours go by and you haven't had another battle because of the choice to not integrate the school and the main mission stories. Now, like I said, Trails of Cold Steel is a fifth game in a nine game arc. So before diving in, it's not necessary that you go read about the other games, but it is helpful um, because throughout the narrative and through all of the dialogue, they will reference and talk about other empires and other characters and other storylines that are happening during this storyline. And so having familiarity is useful. You're like, oh, those are those people. And some of those people do show up in these games, like a little Easter egg. My playthroughs, I think one, Cold Steel 1 was 110 hours. <laughs> Um, Cold Steel 2 is my shortest game at 95, I believe, and Cold Steel 3 is about at 140 hours. So I committed all that time to play through them because once I got through like halfway of Cold Steel 2, I was like, well, we can't stop now. And I looked it up and the speed run of this game is three hours. That tells you how much dialogue is in this game. If you're looking and wanting to play and a fan of class, like very, very classic JRPGs, you may enjoy Trails of Cold Steel. And I'm not saying I haven't enjoyed Trails of Cold Steel, but there have been many, many a moment where I get annoyed with how slow it is. If you're looking for a more fast paced JRPG, this is definitely not for you. And I'm not about to tell you that you should play this game. But I would say overall, the experience is worth it. If you want to play Trails of Cold Steel, you can get it on the PlayStation Network and it is also available for PC on Steam. If you got into this point of the video, you should like it or share it. Or if you didn't already, subscribe. I will be doing more Trails of content. Uh, we'll move on to other games. We'll break down characters. This is just an overview of Cold Steel 1. Just for your memory, my name is Jacoby James, and I will see you later.